Hello and welcome to Finextra TV. We're here at Money 2020 in Amsterdam. I'm Hannah Wallace and with me now is Patrick Gautier, CEO of Convera. Patrick, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today on a really interesting topic. I know you are very busy at Money 2020 this year with a lot of exciting activity around Convera, one of which is the latest report on global trade uh, with a forecast all the way to 2028. So interesting to hear more about that. Uh, what the, the key findings were, let's start there. Well, key findings, uh, commerce has rebounded since 2019 shown really quite a bit of resilience. Uh, global commerce actually exceeded by about half a percent global GDP in terms of growth. And so notwithstanding everything we've seen on um, supply chain disruption and so on, we've seen very resilient global commerce. And as we look forward, what we are seeing is a continued res resilience, even in acceleration. We estimate global commerce uh, in 2022 at $30 trillion to grow to 40 trillion by 2028. Wow. But underneath it, we're seeing differences in terms of the different categories, as well as the ge different geographies that are going to contribute to the growth. All right, and let's talk about that low carbon translation. Interested to hear how this will impact the global goods trade patterns and what some of the challenges, but also opportunities of that will be. What about yeah. that? Evidently, we're seeing uh, both a shift in consumer demand towards uh, a climate conscious products, as well as a shift in uh, national policies. Right? We've seen in the US, for instance, with some of the most recent laws that have been passed. And that is contributing to a massive change in uh, demand for a range of products having to do with the decarbonification of industry. Automobile is an obvious one, but yeah. all of the energy producing capabilities as well. Just picture the fact that the top three producers of lithium in the, in the world are not producers of oil. And you, that kind of gives you a snapshot of the changes that we're going to see, basically different commerce corridors emerging and therefore different uh, and new opportunities emerging. There are so many interesting findings uh, in this report and one of the standout ones uh, was that despite the pandemic and uh, the global geopolitical tensions, uh, Global commerce has actually remained resilient, uh, with cross-border trade, in fact, increasing. So I want to hear more about that. Uh, tell us what's contributing to those uh, factors. Well, I think in the last three years, what we've seen is a re resilience of consumer demand, uh, largely fueled by massive stimulus, if you think, in, you know, in the US and Europe, that truly contributed to, for demand in goods. Mm -hmm. Looking forward, what we're seeing is a fairly dramatic shift from global commerce that is driven by goods to global commerce that is driven by services and digital services. Uh, digital services will grow about a 2x the rate of uh, the growth of uh, global trade in goods. Global trade in goods will actually be slightly lower than the global increase in GDP by about 400 basis points. And, uh, and so that shift is again creating all sorts of opportunity. The, the piece that I think we can all take away, like we've all experienced how the pandemic has created some behavioral change, right? We don't buy the same product, we don't entertain ourselves the same way, we don't work the same way, mm -hmm. and it's created therefore opportunity for, for the digital economy. One of the things we do see that is sort of uh, maybe a back to the future a little bit, is a, uh, uh, an uptick of travel. Travel has not fully recovered yet, but by 2028, this is going to be a massive element of growth as just people want to travel again. So yes, what, what, what will be the implications then uh, in the next sort of few years then as a result of that? Yeah, we, we see just massive opportunities for businesses of all size to tap into global growth. The piece uh, in, in really what we do as a company is really help those companies sort of tap into that growth and deal with the growing complexity of going global, right? Uh, the regulatory background is massively changing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and changing very fast and uh, we're here to help. But also the, the shift into a, a period of time where you have inflation, high interest rates, diverging fiscal and monetary policies which have very practical implication on foreign exchange. Just, just picture that Last year, in, in, in last decade, on average, the major currencies would trade 
within about 5% of one another during a year. Last year, the range was 20%. Right? The British pound went from 135 to the dollar to parity back to 124. Mm. Those are massive shifts. If you're running a business that is highly dependent upon external uh, global trade, these are really difficult flows to manage. Mm -hmm. Our job is to actually uh, help those companies think through the implication, establish risk management strategies, and really allow themselves to grow with confidence. All right, so I want to end on the call to action off the back of all of that, and perhaps some advice then uh, to those businesses that are looking to adapt uh, to ensure sustainable growth then. So uh, what's the call to action there? Well, definitely, you know, if you are wondering about how to grow globally. Call us, we, we have three decades of experience. We have a deep understanding of the markets around the world. Remember, we're in over 200 countries. We have clients in over 200 countries and territories. We trade in over 140 currencies. So we have sort of this really deep understanding of from the simplest transaction, spot transaction, to the most complex hedging capabilities, how to really tap into the global trade opportunities. Wonderful, well Patrick, I can hear the event heating up uh, around us already, uh, but thank you so much for sharing your insights and I urge anyone uh, looking to learn more to go to that report and read that, but uh, I'll let you get back out there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, having me.